Greetings, everyone. I'm Dr. Dave Webb, and welcome to today's edition of the Home Run Leadership Show, our Wednesday webinar, our webcast, and any other web term, World Wide Web, Weberuni, anything you want to add to that, just please do. Today, we're just going to have some fun with running the bases with all of our IROD 4. I'm going to talk today a little bit about the science of IROD and how I stumbled into the science that kept repeating over and over again in all the literature in my doctorate program. So IROD is the focus for today, the core science of four that repeats over and over again, which is all the best leadership science, all packed into four simple steps. We are focused today. Thanks for joining us. Let's have some fun. So if you go back about 20 years ago, I was taking classes to get my doctorate degree at the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota. And during my program, I had been a high school teacher at a school where there was a, just a large amount of conflict that was playing out and mediation trainers were brought in. I had an incredible mediation trainer and had a great experience for three days about running the bases, using the four steps in mediation training, conflict management training, to make sure that you always got to a team resolution at the end of those four steps. So we did exercise after exercise for three straight days to make sure that we were fully trained up to really go back into the building and help with student to student conflict management, student to staff, staff to staff, where, wherever we could help out. About 30 of us uh, staff members at the high school level were trained to make sure that things went better, continuing to move forward each and every day. So what a gift that was. Great leadership, brought building leaders together, trained us up, and sure shooting. Um, we got back into our regular teaching role and a couple of days later, there was a conflict between a student and the teacher at the site. And they asked for a couple of mediators to come in. We helped mediate through that, got to a good resolution and moved forward and moved the team forward. What I started to see was, it seemed almost magical. These simple four steps in mediation were just a great way to get to problem solving and a resolution. I was also in my doctorate program at the same time, and I met an incredible lady, Miria Hansen, who's one of the best facilitators, I think, in our nation. Miria uh, works here in the Twin Cities of St. Paul, Minneapolis, and invited me into one of her training sessions, a top training session, Technology of Participation. Those classes are still out there for people that are interested in large group team facilitation. But what I noticed, noticed within the training was that all the training followed four steps. Every one of these systems that I'm going to talk about today call it something different. Pop calls it objective, reflective, interpretive, decisional. I call it IROD to just simplify the science of always getting all the information, reactions, options, decisions. So everything I do with all the science after 20 years of using it as a practitioner, as an assistant principal, principal and superintendent, I wanted to make sure that I coached my teams, my school board, my leadership group, even my own family on how to run the bases better and faster. Because if you can make better, faster team decisions, you don't have to stay in the roundabout of conflict uh, you can keep move, moving forward with your family on deciding where you're going on vacation or what movie to go to, or even what's for dinner, and all of those scenarios that work every single day. So conflict management training, large group facilitation training. I was then invited into a restorative practice training with Diane Gossin, a great trainer that, again, taught us restorative practices that uses, you guessed it, four simple steps. The words of those steps changed 
Some of the questions varied slightly, but the core science is all the same. Finally, as superintendent, I worked with a great director of learning. Some people call it a curriculum director, Dr. Chad Schmidt. Dr. Schmidt showed us the core of leadership types. And there's an activity, you can Google search it, called Compass Points. And Compass Points highlights four simple steps of team types. What is your team leadership type? And I got permission from their organization to also include that science in my book. So mediation, conflict resolution, really, group facilitation, restorative practices, team leadership types, and all this science started stacking on top of each other. And I think it's really critical that we get it up and out to leaders today. That's why I wrote the book, Home Run Leadership. It's your guide to better, faster team decisions. And there are some gems in here that will simplify uh, the base path that I call it, which is really the framework, four steps that will get you to decisions with your team better and faster. So let's take the, the I rod that's on the screen, information, reactions, options, decisions, and let's have some fun with it today. So what I do, and you can see in uh, the upper corner of our screen, we have IROD here, but over here we have home run leadership. The reason that I have my logo, the reason that I always refer to the home run is that there's always four simple steps. There's four core of leadership. The science keeps repeating itself over and over again. So the sooner and the faster that you can learn the four core, and that's what we'll start doing today, the faster your team can move on decisions. And the better you can, better and faster you can move together, the more wins that you can put in the books. That's really my hope for you, that you can increase your wins. I like to say, can we increase your batting average? Because I believe home run leadership will increase everyone's batting average. So, in mediation, four. Conflict resolution, four. Large group facilitation, four. And it keeps going into team types. And we wanna make sure that you know that it always touches, the science always repeats, the pattern is always the same for the core four of leadership. I call the four Diamonds, the four bases on a baseball diamond, that's your framework. IROD is a framework. And you always have to know what base you are on when you're leading. So one strategy I would leave you with today is you are shifting now from just participant in a meeting to being one of the co-pitchers for the meeting. You might not have the title of leader, but now that you know the core four, it's really up to you to help the leader lead better and faster. The number one question I get when I do workshops and trainings, they raise their hand. They said, uh, Dave, what do I do if my boss, I'm on a team and my boss doesn't use IRON? Most bosses don't. This really was never taught in my bachelor's program, my master's program, my doctorate program. I brought it into my doctorate program from all the outside training I had. All the training that gave me IROD came from outside of my educational programs. I ended up writing my dissertation on IROD, and I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. But uh, most people aren't learning this in school. We got to make sure that we're teaching it worldwide to accelerate the success of our businesses, of our churches, of our schools, and our families. So where do we go from here? I always like to start with the framework. So IROD, four bases is your framework. If you can't memorize IROD, if you can't come up with information, reactions, options, decisions, pause the YouTube right now or pause your 
uh, your podcast right now. And let's make sure that you know what IROD stands for. So you always know the four core of the framework. Frameworks number one. Next, I think it's critical that you know that the leadership types stack right on top of the four bases. And I use IROD because the IROD follows right in order the four base types. Information is first base. Second base are reactions. Third base are options. Fourth base is all about getting to the team decision, agreement, or plan. We wanna make sure that you know your type. So I'm gonna take a minute and open up my book and get your type. If you want a speedier way to get your leadership type, just go to homerunleadership.com. There's a free quiz and you can click on the button that says take your leadership type assessment. So if you take that quick quiz, it's 20 questions, yes or no, you're gonna get a color coded chart with your leadership type. But let's find it out today. Number one, if you're a first baser, you might be a first baser if you really like to get all the details, the facts, the data and information before you make a decision. So all decision making is gonna follow those four steps. First basers, information types, can't get enough information. They wanna get all the info, the details, the data, yeah, anything re regarding first base information, they need all of it in order to make the best decision. Second base. For second basers, when you are making a decision, you uh, we call your reaction type, but you're very caring people. You want to get all the feedback, the feelings, the reactions, and reflections from your team and uh, if you work for an organization, you're going to want that organizational feedback to make the best decisions that end up impacting your organization. Second basers, reactions, that's your type, but you focus on getting all the reactions, the reflections, the uh, feedback and feelings as well. If you get all of that, you can move on to third base and fourth base. That's really how you make your best decisions. Next, third basers. You might be a third baser if you really focus on the big picture for your organization or your team. You wanna know all the possibilities, the ideas, all the options. You love to brainstorm, create the list, and the strength of your type is that you like to vet that list with pros and cons. And that's exactly what's needed to get from third base to fourth base. Because you always vet it with pros and cons. All of your options happens every night that we choose what's for dinner at our family. We create a list of three options, hamburgers, pizza, chicken. We talk about what people had for lunch or what we've had the last few days, pros and cons. Some items start dropping on the list to reprioritize to figure out, okay, what's our plan for dinner? What can we agree with? What can we get for consensus? And consensus doesn't mean that everyone agrees. It just means that you have the will of your family, the will of your team, the will of your board to move forward. So third base options, again, you wanna make sure you will like to know the big picture and you like to know all the possibilities, the ideas and options. You wanna know the best choice what are the best choices to move ahead? And fourth, you might be a fourth baser, and I am guilty of being a fourth baser. You might be a fourth baser. When you're making the decisions, you like to act, try things, jump in, and you always like to reach a decision, agreement, a plan, a recommendation. Sometimes even if you don't have all the information, the reactions and options, so you can be guilty as a fourth baser of ready, aim, shoot, or I think it's shoot, ready, aim, actually. If you shoot first and then 
aim and get ready afterwards, you might be a fourth baser. You jump in before having all the information, all the reactions, and all the options. So as a leader, those are the types. The framework is the four bases. The types sit on top of the four bases. And I'm going to go to the formula next, home run leadership formula. So completing my dissertation, on page 25 of my book, there is a chart which gives you the four best questions in the formula for running the bases, the most generic best questions that you can use. Um, they're most the most versatile questions that I could develop for you to run the bases with almost any situation. This formula not only has four questions, because you have to ask every IROD question, one, two, three, and four, I, R, O, and D, to get all the information, all the reactions, all the options, vet those options with pros and cons to reprioritize the list. And then you have to check to see if this decision is the will of the group. That's how you run the bases. But there's one more key component on page 25. I have a cleanup question at every base. The reason I say you have to get all the information, when you have shifted into asking questions, you're shifting your role as a facilitator into being the pitcher, what you're pitching is actually questions, good questions for the team. You actually have to ask two questions at first base. The first is, do we have all the information on this? So picture going into your next team meeting, an agenda item is in front of you. You have to make a decision on this. If your leader doesn't ask, do we have all the information on this with the team? You can ask it and make sure that you have space to get all the information by saying, is there anything else, any additional information? So there's really two questions at every base one to ask IROD and one to clean it up with a question called anything else. I always like to share the story that if you're driving through Starbucks, shout out to Starbucks. If, you, if you're driving through Starbucks and, and who happens to have their cup right here. Um, but if you're driving through Starbucks and you uh, order a cup of coffee, they're going to ask you the best customer service question out there. You have to tuck this anything else question in your back pocket and make sure that you've touched first, second, third, and fourth base. So when you've asked anything, um, do I have all the information, anything else? Do we have all the reactions, anything else? Do we have all the options that are the pros and cons and reprioritize the list, anything else? And is this decision, the will of the group, as our rank choice our new order of our top priority. Is this our decision to move forward? People can comment. Never forget to ask at the end of every base, anything else. The way to bring in a restorative practice that really respects all team types, gives voice to all team members. And in a time when inclusion is so important in our world today and elevating all voices, it's a great, great way to be respectful of all team members. So, you know the framework, the four bases, I-R-O-D, first, second, third, fourth. You know the team types, information, reactions, options, decision, the same core four. You now know the formula, the four questions you need to ask for every base, and the cleanup question for each base. And so right now, with the gift on page 25, I call it $50,000 on one page. It's my whole dissertation work put into one page. So in the Home Run Leadership book, page 25 gives you four of the best questions and actually eight because anything else is in there too. To accelerate your team in decision-making every single day. If you can start getting good at those eight questions, kind of the core of my dissertation work, the best questions for your team, 
you can begin in any situation that's coming up to vary and tweak those questions a little bit to make sure that you're hitting home runs in every single meeting that you have at work every day. Why? Well, let me tell you about my dissertation for a minute. So I studied four, um, the four steps, the science of four, as you heard over and over again. When I started seeing all the science follows these same four steps, I asked my committee for permission to be my theoretical framework, my lens that I could overlay my study with to really allow to be the scientific backbone for all the stories and interviews that I con conducted in my dissertation study. What was really cool is that I studied 10 high school principals that all tried to implement the same change. They tried to implement and change their daily schedule. For people in the business world, I'm sure you're thinking, well, if they wanted to change their daily schedule, why wouldn't they just tell their staff that tomorrow we're gonna have a new daily schedule? In the school world, in the world of education, you have to work with your team of teachers, with the staff, with the parents, with the students, because there are some highly political decisions and one like changing your debt uh, your school schedule is a highly political decision because it affects everyone's lives in that building and in that campus. So if you don't run the bases with teachers and staff and parents and students, by the time the decision gets to the board and you ask for permission to move ahead, if you haven't touched the bases, and many of the principals in my study skipped bases, or I call stole bases and went from information to decisions with individual groups. Principles that touched the core four, that completed the core four with all the stakeholder groups reached a home run in my study. The people that had wind at their back by the time they got in front of the school board, and here's the inside secret for superintendents watching, School boards and boards in general, church boards, business boards, always ask the same four questions. They ask high rod questions every single time. If the management team's doing a great job, they're going to come forward and say, here's our recommendation board. So the CEO or superintendent or your lead of your foundation, whatever it is, will come in front of the board and say, here's our recommendation for tonight. And time after time, in these 10 studies with these 10 high school principals, they worked in tandem with their superintendent. They brought the recommendation in front of the board. The board, like clockwork, always asked these same four IROD questions. Do we have all the info? Do we have all the reactions of the board members to this information in front of you? Is there anybody else that would like to speak on this tonight that we haven't heard from to get more info and reactions? Can we look at all the options for moving ahead? We could stay status quo, not change the daily schedule. Can we shift, change the daily schedule? And what are the pros and cons of a shift or no shift, a change or no change? In the school districts where the principals ran the base as well, and they got stakeholder groups to the D in IROD, those stakeholder groups came to the board meeting and spoke up in support of their plan. And the school board said, wow, looks like we have a lot of support here. Let's move forward and support this decision. In school districts where they skipped bases, where the principal missed process, stole bases, skipped steps, and they went from I to D or a little bit of I and R and went to D by themselves and stole bases. Stakeholders showed up at the school board meeting still, but they showed up to complain that their voice wasn't heard, that they weren't included, that this was going to be the worst change ever moving forward. And the majority of the time with those school boards, when faced with heavy resistance, heavy complaints, more complaints than positives, 
decided and chose to not move forward with that change. The long story short of my dissertation is touch every base with every stakeholder group. Always ask IROD questions. Use the framework of IROD. Always use the core four for the framework, respecting the types on those teams so you know what questions to ask to make sure that you're as inclusive as possible, to run good process using the questions on page 25 in my book, to hit home run after home run after home run. In the complex nature of schools and in many organizations and churches, is you have to hit multiple home runs with all stakeholder groups to get combined recommendations to come in front of boards and executives and business owners and the like. If you can do that, you'll get way more wins, increase your batting average, and that's my hope for you each and every day. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we hope you had some fun. We're going to keep coaching home run leadership to grow your leadership base running skills. And like I always say, if you want to go great places, keep running the bases. Catch you next week.